Hello everyone, and welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Church on this 13th Sunday after Pentecost. May our worship today be glorifying to God and a blessing to you. Amen. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We now pause for a moment to reflect on our sins and the forgiveness we're promised in Jesus. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you, and also with you. A reading from Ephesians chapter 4. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the tenth chapter. And they were bringing children to him, that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God, like a child, shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms, and blessed them, laying his hands on them. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Before our service continues with today's message, I'd just like to share a quick word on our summer sermon series. Our sermon series this summer is entitled, Touchy Topics. Handle the truth in love. The first conversation between Satan and Eve in the Garden of Eden contained multiple lies. Eve fell for them all. In our world, Satan still presents multiple lies to us. And just like Eve, we too fall for many of them. As you look at the list of lies below, I imagine that you, like so many of us, have fallen for some of these lies. As a matter of fact, you may even feel a little angry that Pastor Nelson and I are calling some of these statements a lie. These, indeed, are touchy topics. Yet we will strive, with God's help, to handle each lie with the truth of God's Word and with God's love. After all, one of Satan's greatest tricks is for us to believe the truth, yet respond without love. And this is wrong. This summer, we will look at the truth of many current concerns, yet we will be encouraged to respond with love. God saw the truth of our sin, yet he responded with his love, giving his only son for us. So we too will see the truth and be encouraged to respond with the love of Jesus. Because these topics are so prominent in our culture today, they affect our lives in many ways. And so I would imagine that some of these sermon subjects will be a little sensitive. So I would just like to remind you that if you ever want to speak with myself or Pastor Nelson or Deacon Shirley or Deacon Amanda Marie about any of these topics from any sermon, please feel free to reach out. We would love to speak with you. After all, the purpose of this sermon series is not to hurt, but rather to heal and to help us learn of the truth of God's love. Our culture says that children need to get a cell phone or tablet 
at the earliest age so they can learn to be computer savvy and so that they can connect with their friends. The future will certainly show this to be a terrible error for many children. What do children really need? We will see that today as today's sermon addresses the lie, your kid needs a cell phone. Pastor Nelson will now address the truth in love. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for today's message is taken from the lessons read with emphasis upon these verses. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. That's for our text. Cars enable great things. Cars really are, are a wonderful gift of transportation. They allow us to move quickly and safely between places. They allow long-term trips to see people. They allow for independence. Nobody wants to live without a car. But there are dangers with cars. We recognize that. Some 38,000 Americans die each year from a car accident, and over 4 million are injured. And of course, there's drunk driving, there's uh, texting while driving, distracted drivers. And so there's dangers with cars. So what do we do? Well, we have a recommended age for driving in New York State that's 16. We have training and practice for driving. We do tests. We have supervision. We monitor how our children are doing. And so we uh, prepare them for driving, so to be responsible drivers. What we don't do is say, Happy 16th birthday. Here are keys for your new car, and you'll find a $100 gift card in it. Why don't you go to Crossgates Mall with your friends and just celebrate your birthday? We'd never think of doing that. It would be against the law. It would be fully dangerous for our children. But we don't do the opposite and say, it's too dangerous. You're never going to learn to drive. I I'd never teach you. You're going to stay in your car seat for the rest of your life. You see, we'd be irresponsible parents by not preparing them to be a safe driver. So this is what we do as parents. We prepare our children to be safe and responsible drivers. And so also with the cell phone. We prepare our children to be safe and responsible users of the cell phone. Now, the cell phone does great things. Fabulous things, the, the information we, we, we can get from our, our cell phone, the directions, the GPS. I'm recording this sermon right on my cell phone, right? The contacts that we have in people, the, the text messages and the emails, all the different communication that the cell phone enables. It is really a wonderful tool. But there's dangers with this tool, and you're aware of some of these dangers, the, the cyberbullying, the pornography, and the and the sending of sexually explicit pictures. Um, but you may not realize that the, the cell phone can promote uh, stupidity. And it can do that by uh, substituting so that we, we, our children do not use their mental muscles, but they use the cell phone to find their answers. So they lose their, 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 their ability to have a mental stamina to proceed with math problems and other uh, writing uh, uh, reports and things. And also, a study was done uh, entitled Brain Drain, the mere presence of one's own smartphone reduces available cognitive capacity. Uh, this was uh, reported in the Journal of the Association of Consumer Research. And here's a little bit what this, the authors of this paper report. Subjects were invited into a laboratory to participate in some assessment exercises. Before commencing, however, they were asked to put their cell phones away. Some subjects are asked to place their phone on the desk next to the computer on which they were working. Some were told to put their 
cell phone in their bag. Some others were told to put their phone in another room. Each subject then was subjected to a battery of standard cognitive capacity tests. The results? Subjects measured notably lower on working memory capacity when the cell phone was next to them on the desk compared to when the cell phone was out of sight. This was true, even though in all cases, the subjects didn't actually use their cell phones. The mere presence of the device, in other words, sapped cognitive resources. So just be aware, smartphones may not make you any smarter. In addition, smartphones can cause depression, anxiety, jealousy, sleep deprivation, and isolation. Uh, Dr. Uh, Michelle Borba, a psychologist, uh, reported that uh, there's troubling new evidence that children who are on technology for many hours lose their bonding with their parents. And so this psychologist reports that uh, research confirms that the more time kids spend plugged in, the greater likelihood they will have lower attachments or reduced relationships with their parents. Of course, that makes just perfect sense. And then there's the, the danger of addiction. These devices and the apps that they contain are designed to be addictive. Nair Eli wrote a book called Hooked, How to Build Habit-Forming Products. And according to a professor at the University of South Carolina, this book describes step-by-step step how to use psychological tricks to make apps addictive by using variable rewards in which a digital treat like gems and coins in various games or the likes in Facebook, which only sometimes are distributed, the user comes to anticipate the slight rush of the fleeting reward. Because the reward is not reliable, the twitchy behavior is triggered in which we feel like we have to keep checking for messages, for likes, for status updates. And so this little device becomes addictive. And so, what do we do then as parents? What do we do? Do we just say, ah, who cares about that? Happy fourth birthday, here's a new tablet. Happy eighth birthday, here's a new cell phone. Or do we say, I'm going to lock my children away from any screen, from any cell phone, from any, any tablet. I'm going to uh, lock them away so they'll never use these things. No. We do like we do with a car. We take this parental responsibility seriously. And we prepare. And so we set an age. You know, what's the age? It's hard to say. But uh, uh, some, on this survey, shows that 40% say middle school. I personally think that that's a little young. Uh, 33% say high school. That's probably a good range, while they're still in our, in our, in our ability to, to, to monitor. Uh, this is how uh, uh, Tim Challies, a pastor who's a, a blogger, uh, writes about his children. He says, we need to prepare our kids to live in this world. The reality of this world is our kids will grow up and live in a world where they will be surrounded by electronic devices at all times. In fact, they will probably, through most of their lives, be within arm's reach at most times to these little glowing rectiles, rectangles or whatever comes after that. And through it, they'll have a window through the world. So we need to prepare them to live in this world. And so we prepare them. And we monitor them. 
And there's various ways of monitoring. I won't go into details now. And we set our own personal example of responsible use of cell phones. Ultimately, we aim for independence. We want them, by the time they leave our home, by the time they're 18 years old, to, to be able to make the calls in how they deal with all the technology that's in their life and are coming down into their lives. And so we aim for that independence. Again, this is how uh, Tim Challis described with their own children how they went through this process. But we didn't just give them a fully featured phone. We took away some of the capabilities of that phone. We allowed them texting. We allowed them some emailing. But we didn't allow them browsing. We allowed them to do some things, like play games, but there were other things we locked out. We didn't allow them any app they wanted. And over time, we monitored what they did with their phone. Were they using it well? Were they using it with wisdom? Or were they using it foolishly? When they proved that they could use it well, we allowed them to have more access to it and more capabilities. If they proved they weren't using it well, that's where we started to strip away some of those capabilities. So you see, we've been trying to train them by giving them a phone when they're still under our jurisdiction and we're still able to monitor them. Give them a phone. Over time, monitor how they use it. The more they use it well, the more we believe we are training them to use it well throughout the course of their lifetime. And so that's how we do it as parents. We are responsible with the cell phone as we are with the car. Now, are there any connections between cell phones and God? Well, yes or no. It's going to tell you what you mean by connections. But they kind of have similar aspects to them. So let's take a look at them. Guidance. Of course, the cell phone has GPS and other guidance. But God has guidance through his word for our life. Communication. Cell phones designed to communicate. Well, God has given us prayer so we can communicate to him. Connectedness. The cell phone supposedly allows for better connection between people. I'm not sure if that's true. But we know through the body of Christ, God wants us to be connected to, to one another. And information. The cell phone has access to all kinds of information. But God's word has access to the information we really need for life. Power. The cell phone needs power to operate. We need power to operate. And God gives the power for us to live. St. Paul expressed it this way. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. God gives us the power we need for life and for difficult circumstances. And forgiveness the cell phone can be rather unforgiving. We send a bad text, we send a bad picture, and we can be in trouble for a long time. A lot different than God. God knew we were going to make mistakes in all kinds of different ways, whether with the cell phone or with, with parenting, all kinds of ways. But God still loved us. So God sent his son, his one and only son, our Savior Jesus, to go to the cross to bear our sins, so that we could be forgiven. And in Jesus, there is complete forgiveness. It's expressed in so many ways in the Bible. Though your sins be like scarlet, the Bible says they shall be as white as snow. And the Bible also says that uh, God promises, I will remember their sins no more. Not like the internet that seems to remember all our sins. God says, I will remember their sins no more. What wonderful forgiveness we have through Jesus Christ. And I trust. Cell phone. Uh, it's hard to trust the cell phone. Hard to trust what we hear. It's a lot of fake news and all kinds of stuff going on out there. But God is trustworthy. His word is trustworthy. Jesus is trustworthy. And we can trust his promises. And life, the cell phone is to, to add things to our life, and so it does, and we're thankful for the good things it adds, but it can take away good things from our life as we just focus on the technology. 
but God came to give us life. Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. The one who created you wants to give you the ultimate gift of life here on earth and life eternal with God. The one who died on Good Friday also rose on Easter Sunday to conquer the power of death to give you eternal life. And in Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, we find our ultimate meaning for life. Well, there's that wave. I've seen it four times. It's a wave and a smile, a wave from a, a, a child who just passed their driver's test, and now they're going solo for the first time. They pull out of the driveway, they turn back and give that wave. And how do we feel as a parent at that point in time? How did I feel? Well, I just turned to the Lord and said, Lord, protect them, watch over them, guide them, help them to be responsible drivers, but help them to know you first and foremost so that no matter what happens in that car, it will always be yours. That was my prayer at that point. And it's the same thing for technology use, for cell phones. We prepare and train our children to use them. But ultimately, we want them to be independent. And as they use it, we pray they don't use it for bad purposes in their life. But they're responsible and faithful users. And we commit them to God's hands. So that's how we deal with cars. That's how we deal with cell phones. We trust our, entrust our children to the Lord after we've done our very best to prepare and train them. Amen. We now join in confessing our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you have not already done so this week, I would like to encourage you to reflect upon your tithes and offerings to the Lord. If you would like to mail in your tithes or offerings, you may do so to the mailing address that is on the screen. If you would like to give your tithes or offerings online, you may do so on our website. Simply go to the website rlc.life and click the Give Online button. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.